Hi, this is Dr. Minkoff, LifeWorks Wellness Center, Clearwater, Florida. I want to talk to you about something today that very, very few doctors understand or know about or utilize in their practices, and that's called scar therapy. Now, I learned this from a couple of German doctors, actually a Swiss and a German doctor, and it's called neural therapy. So neural meaning nerve. Neural therapy means treating the nerves. A German doctor in, I think, the 1940s, by accident, figured out that sometimes when a person has their body cut, like the skin is cut or injured, that what occurs is at that place of injury, where the scar is when it heals, can cause a disturbance in the way the whole nervous system works. And so, in the first patient that he saw, the guy, the doctor's name was Heineke. What he found that by accident, he put a local anesthetic in a person's finger because he was going to anesthetize it because they had a cut, that their chronic migraine headaches went away. And he had the brilliance to realize that maybe what he did with the, with the area that he injected the local anesthetic was even associated with the headache because the patient noticed that they didn't get headaches after that. Now here's what happens. If you have a piece of skin, for example, and you get a cut across it, I cut it with a knife or I injure it with, with something sharp. The nerve now this is this this band here I'm going to call the nerve that got cut and this thing across here is the cut and then the scar so when you cut a nerve it will scar now the way nerves work is negative electrical charges so I've got minuses here go down the outside of the nerve to transmit the communication from the brain to the finger or from the finger back to the brain in the area where the scar is, so this is the scar, there is a polarity reverse. So polarity is plus or minus. So this thing is all minus, but in the scar, it turns positive. And not only is it positive, but it's actually like a positive little pulsating generator. If this nerve, if the brain says, I've got to get a communication to the hand, is trying to get through here, it is blocked or slowed by this positive pulsating thing that's going on in the nerve cell membrane. And so this impulse may not reach the finger at all, or it may get there slow. Now the brain works on a feedback mechanism, so it sends a message and it has to get something back that said, I got the message. If the brain, let's say the brain's up here, sends the message through and this is slow and the brain doesn't get the immediate feedback that the message got through, it will send another message. And then it may send another message by another way. And it may send another message by another way. The brain gets kind of frantic because it's got to have a, I sent you something, I didn't hear from you, why aren't you answering me? Okay, so it's just like you're upstairs and your wife's downstairs. It'd probably be the other way around. All right, you're upstairs, the wife's downstairs. The wife says to you, how are you? No answer. How are you? No answer. Damn it, how are you? You know, the brain is the same way, okay? If the first how are you was, oh, I'm great, it would stop the whole cycle. If there's no response, it gets more frantic on this end, and he may not have even heard her, or he's busy doing something, or he's mad at her, who knows, doesn't matter. But the feedback doesn't come. Now, this produces a stress in the nervous system, and it causes funny reactions, okay? Like migraine headaches, or chronic gallbladder pain, or chronic joint pain, or something else. Now it's never associated, or numbness, numbness on the other end. What the doctor just uh, figured out is that if he put a little bit 
of a local anesthetic, we use procaine. So procaine is different than the usual anesthetics that are given because it has a very short half-life, about 30 minutes, and it's metabolized into two B vitamins, so it isn't really a very toxic drug, but it's an anesthetic. And what he learned is if they put a little bit of that anesthetic in this area, it would reverse the polarity of this plus to a minus, and now you got nerve flow. About 15 years ago, I published a paper on five cases that were just extraordinary from doing scar therapy on patients that had chronic problems. Now, one of them was a 19-year-old woman who was engaged, and she was about to get married, and she hadn't had any relations with her husband pre-getting married. And her mother brought her in here because she said, I'm really worried that on their wedding night, things are going to be rough because she has this area on her low back, which if you touch it, makes her crazy, literally crazy. So I talked to her for a while. And from the history, what I found out was when this 19 year old was about eight months old, she had leukemia. And the drugs that are used to treat leukemia do not get into the central nervous system. They do not get into the brain. But the leukemic cells can go into the brain. And if you get a successful treatment in the rest of the body, but not in the brain, the cells could leave the brain and cause the leukemia to come back. So part of the standard treatment was to do spinal taps every time she got a chemo treatment and put the chemo drug in her low back, in the spinal fluid, they would then tip her upside down, the chemo would go into the brain, and she had many, many of these in the first year or two of life. Now she was a successfully treated leukemic. She's now 19. She's fine. She doesn't have leukemia. She's completely fine. But she's got an area in her low back, which if you touch it, makes her feel crazy and act crazy. So I said, well, it may be that there's a scar there because she had all these needles poked in that one area where you get in to do the spinal tap. And we could do scar therapy on that area and maybe that would have a good effect on her. So I talked to the girl about it. I explained how this goes. She said, you're gonna have to hold me down because this ref I can't control myself, okay? So we got a whole bunch of big people in here and we held her down on the table. And I put a little bit of local anesthetic where the area was where you do spinal taps. She got sweaty, she screamed. It took maybe 30 seconds. And I said, come back tomorrow, let's see how you're doing. And she came back the next day and I said, how you doing? I said, I'm doing good. She says, go ahead and touch it. And I rubbed my hand all over the bottom area and she was completely fine. Handled the whole thing, okay? I've had people who have had breast implants around the areola area where the implant was put in, they had a scar. The scar got treated. They were numb after the operation because the nerves were cut. The nerves turned back on. Now they had sensation. Had a guy with a hernia. His, uh, he got um, erectile dysfunction after the hernia. We treated the scar for the hernia. His erectile dysfunction went away. So there are endless cases of this kind of thing, which are very, very interesting but that can make a difference. So one of the things on your, on your history when you fill it out is what operations have you had? What cuts have you had where you've got stitches or where you can see visible scars? Make a little picture of that because part of our treatment will be to fix those scars. Because some of your symptoms, whether it's migraine headaches or, or funny even psychological reactions, might be due to a scar. Just going to tell you one more story. This was a woman who moved to Florida, uh, was fine, and then delivered a baby by C-section. And what happened after the C-section is that she couldn't sweat. And she was living in Florida, and if you can't sweat, it makes it very tough. She also gained about 15 pounds, and she got high blood pressure. And when I saw her, it was 15 years later. So she's got 15 years of medication for high blood pressure, and for, um, for can't sweat, so she's miserable, and, uh, and she gained all this weight and she can't lose the weight. 
So I treated her C-section scar. I had to do, actually do it a couple of times. But the first time that I did it, so we put a little skinny dental needle, it's very tiny, burns a little bit when you do it, just along the edge of the scar. And on the table, she broke out in a sweat and the paper was soaked by the time I was done. Okay? And it turned out that she lost the weight and her high, her high blood pressure went away too after a couple of treatments. So sometimes these things seem mysterious, but this has worked out. There's textbooks on this and it can be very effective. So that's what scar therapy is. That's what it's for. In most people, it's a one-time thing and we handle it. Sometimes we need to do, repeat it, uh, but that's unusual. Okay? So hope this helps. Uh, see you soon.